Mance, welcome to Real Vision. Hi, Ash. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure to have you here. You know, I interviewed your uh, co-founder, Lehman Baird, uh, two, three years ago, so long ago uh, that I don't believe it was called Hedera Hashgraph yet. You know, that's possible. Uh, we There was a lot of talk about the project before we revealed the name. <laughs> so yeah, that that's quite possible. Yeah. You know, you've had a long and distinguished career in technology. Uh, you've worked at some uh, very big, uh, well-known companies, including Motorola. You taught computer science at the Air Force Academy. Uh, and you have one item on your resume that I'm sure that everyone asks you about, but I'm just intrigued by it. You were program director at the Missile Defense uh, Agency at the for the Missile Defense War Games Project, I should say. At yeah. the Missile Defense <laughs> Agency. No, that's right. Uh, so, you know, a, a lot of your viewers might remember the movie War Games from the 1980s. You know, Matthew Broderick was the star. Uh, I managed a program that built sort of the real thing. We we uh, had a, it was a massive simulator that made it possible for the U.S. and its allies to play war games to figure out how to protect our populations and, and those of our allies from incoming ballistic missiles. And uh, it was a great experience. I'm just honored that I was able to contribute in that way. And, and it was a fun two years for sure. Yeah. You know, every guy or gal who's about my age watched that movie growing up. And like, if you were interested in technology, it was like a, a touchstone for nerdiness and something that uh, I think probably had an impact on lots of people in my generation. Uh, but it is also interesting to think uh, about some of the uh, parallels, perhaps uh, large networks, uh, distributed uh, sensors, distributed information. Tell us a little bit how you got interested in distributed ledger technology. Well, it's interesting you say that because it's correct. I mean, we, my, my co-founder Lehman, who you mentioned earlier, and I have been working together for a really long time, since 93. And a lot of the projects coincidentally had some element of decentralization involved in them. Uh, you mentioned one that was sort of a distributed um, collection or network of, of sensors and I'll call them actuators. They're really weapon systems for shooting down missiles, that sort of thing. But then we started a company in the space of identity and access management. That was our first company. And we built a decentralized, uh, think of it as a pass, fancy password manager for enterprise, where the password, the management of the password database for an enterprise didn't happen in a central database within an enterprise. It was distributed across devices and and you know we we've had those kinds of sort of ancient you know 20 plus years ago experiences lehman went to work in 2012 to solve a really hard decentralized uh math problem or distributed consensus math problem and that problem specifically was how to create a consensus algorithm that both maximized performance and maximize security simultaneously. It, it's been a decades old problem. I mean, it's been clear how to have the best security in the world. Um, there's a term for that, asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance, but it's always come at the expense of um, resource requirements, bandwidth specifically. You, you know, the more computers you add to the network, the more bandwidth that's required, so it never would scale. Lehman wanted to solve that problem, and he did in 2015. He, he created what today we call Hashgraph, and that sort of led us down this path of uh, building a now a public distributed ledger that is based on the Hashgraph algorithm with these fantastic performance and security properties. Yeah. You know, one of the great things about Real Vision is that we have the time to delve in in some detail uh, to cover uh, some of these topics. So let's talk a little bit about the nature uh, of a asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance, uh, the challenge itself, and then virtual voting and how Hashgraph solves uh, those problems. Talk a little bit about the nature of the challenge first, if you would. Yeah, well, the problem is, so you can create a consensus algorithm that makes it possible for the participants in the network to vote on the order of transactions. And the problem is, as the number of transactions goes up, the voting that's required, just sending the votes to every node in the network, the bandwidth requirements for that go up exponentially. 
And, and, and that's been the challenge. So the question is how hypothetically could you build a consensus algorithm in a network that had the same properties, but didn't require the participants to send their votes to each other, you know, cut out that bandwidth requirement. The, the innovation here, the insight that Lehman had was that if when you create a transaction, let's say Alice wants to pay Bob a, a token, an H bar in our case, when Alice creates that transaction and she sends it to the network, um, along with that transaction is a little bit of information on top. Namely, the last transaction that she created and the last transaction she received. So the last one she created prior to this one and the last one she received, not the full transactions, but just a hash of each. That's a technical term. It's just a digest of the information to make it really tiny. But if you include that information, when you submit the transaction, everyone does the same thing. When anyone is creating transactions, they include those two pieces of information. Then it becomes possible for everyone in the network, all the nodes in the network, to take all of that information, those hashes, and chain them together into a graph that represents, basically, conceptually, represents who knew what and when they knew it. That's the hash graph. And so all transactions flow in, every node in the network receives every transaction, and they use the metadata, those hashes, to create their copy of the hash graph that describes the flow of that information across the network. And then you've got enough information. This was the insight. There's enough information in this hash graph that you can use one of these consensus algorithms, voting algorithm algorithms that I've mentioned, but instead of asking Bob how he would vote on the order of two transactions, you can look in the hash graph and you can just calculate what Bob would answer if you were to ask him the question. You don't have to ask him. All the information is there. All nodes in the network have exactly the same information, identical information. They all use the same consensus algorithm and then they all can run this consensus algorithm on their local copy of the hash graph and calculate what every other node in the network would vote if they were to ask the question, order, you know, how would you order this set of transactions? And they all come up with the same answer. That's virtual voting. And, and that's the innovation. He solved the problem of cutting out the bandwidth requirement by going to virtual voting, but maintaining the fantastic properties of uh, voting algorithms, asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance, simultaneously and is just brilliant. That's how it works. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.